My first guest tonight is a movie star you've known as Jean Valjean, P.T. Barnum, and Wolverine. He now stars as Senator Gary Hart in The Front Runner. Senator, we know you've made calls to this woman from Kansas and New Hampshire. Well, I make calls the every day. I don't see how I'd remember. Well, but, but Senator, and I don't... Oh, was that your announcement speech? Okay, you said you said we I we must hold I, ourselves accountable what I said. to the highest possible standards of integrity what? and ethics. Then why are we standing here? Why are we standing in an alley on a Saturday night? I mean, did you think you owe it to us to be forthcoming? Oh, you. Yeah. You're denying what we've seen with our own eyes. The only eyes. thing I deny is the idea that somehow you have the right to ask me these things. You're running for president. I'm aware of that, Tom. It's in the papers. Well, you have a responsibility. I know full well what my responsibilities are. Do you know yours? Please welcome Hugh Jackman. <laughs> That not at rude. all. I'm not going to let somebody you out hug an audience member. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, your producer said, oh, do you know Andy Lee, who's over there with right Beck? There, and so Andy in Australia is almost as famous as you are here. No, but seriously, he and Hamish, we've got some Aussies here. <laughs> like, we ship a few in. We ship and I a feel, few in just to make I it feel, feel really bad because Andy sent me an email today and I hadn't replied. And I was like, really, dude? You have to send up to the show? Like, I I'm going to reply to you any second. Anyway. This, this moment email. right now is huge in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> but here, cut. <laughs> Sorry, no, we'll Andy. Keep it, we'll keep it. Go on. We'll see how the interview goes. <laughs> now, um, as I was saying uh, before, a lot of people got to know you first through uh, your work as Wolverine. Yeah. Obviously, that was created at, at Marvel that was overseen by, yeah. by Stan Lee. That's right. Tell me about uh, meeting, meeting Stan. Well, first of all, I, I, I love what you said. And uh, let me just say to the family uh, and to the legions of fans uh, that I remember Stan as a true gentleman who had this glint in his eye. He's a creative genius. He thought outside the box. He created a whole universe that changed the lives of many people, mine included. But when I met him, first of all, if you ever want to get a real understanding of where you're at in the world, and you think, oh, I'm Wolverine, I'm walking into Comic-Con, this is, you know, this is my spot, right? This is a good day for me. And I was on a, a, a red carpet, and I was the only one on there, and no one was taking my photo because at the other end was Stan Lee. And there was <laughs> about 300 photographers and interviewers just all on Stan. And I was just like, anyway, Stan, God bless you. You're one of the greats. Well, he... Absolutely, absolutely. But did create created his own world along with the yeah. other people at Marvel. What was it like to be integrated in that world uh, at the beginning? We've talked about uh, like your training and the, the challenges of being Wolverine. Certainly, yeah. when you were doing Logan. What about the first one? You were, I mean, you're a method actor. How do you approach a character who's a mutant and like has so is a Wolverine? Embarrassingly. I didn't know what a wolverine was, and I presume I'd never heard of such an animal, and I presumed it was a made-up name for the comic book. I'd never read an X-Men comic. I'd never seen a wolverine. We don't have them in our zoos. We've got a lot of really crazy animals in Australia. Yes. It's not a marsupial. So I presumed it was a wolf. It's not a marsupial, yes. I, I presumed it was a wolf, and I did study wolves. <laughs> I watched some documentaries. There was a big IMAX movie at the time. I went twice to go and see it. So you put in the hours. So for the first four, yeah. I put in the hours and I turned up on set for a fight rehearsal and I was just incorporating some of that. You know, wolves always have their nose to the ground. It's always kind of looking through their eyes because they're smelling you. And the director goes, eh, um, what, what are you doing, man, with the body? <laughs> I said, come here. Like, I was thinking, you know, I was doing some work on the wolves and blah, 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 blah. And he goes, Wolves? Like to the whole guy. Why wolves? You're playing a wolverine. I go, well, that's not an animal. And he goes, yeah, it is. Like, go to the zoo. It was a humiliating moment and three oh. weeks of wasted research. But well, it anyway. worked out. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Well, uh, I, I've been I've uh, met your lovely wife, Deborah yes, Lee Furness, yes, yes. and and this is this is the two of you uh, right here. Yeah. Um, now she is uh, like your friend Andy Lee here. She's a very well-known actor in right. Australia. That we may not have known her work up here necessarily. Right. But she's a big deal down there. Yeah. When you met her. Mm. Were you a big deal, or were zero. you zero? You were zero. You were deal. dating up in the in the status big time, chain. and okay. it was my first job, and she was the star of it. So yeah, it was a, it was huge. I remember actually, the first day I went. To, uh, this is Australia, so the second AD, the second assistant director, picked me up and brought me to rehearsal, and uh, yeah, no, no, not in a woo way at all. Just literally picked me up in his own car, took me to rehearsal. <laughs> And I always remember Deb was already in the car, sitting in the front seat. And I thought, oh, Holly, she's because she'd been in Hollywood and done some movies. I thought, oh, you know, I wonder how this is going to go. And she's in the front seat. That's a good sign. She's not like, you know, I'm sitting in the back of my, you know, chauffeur limousine. And then she took off her sunglasses. She put her feet on the seat and she just reached out and she goes, hi, I'm Deborah Lee. And I was like... I'm going to marry that woman. So <laughs> I did not think that. But about, <laughs> well, two, weeks, you... about two weeks later, I did. What, what, what happened I two knew, weeks later? I just knew. I just knew that when early on, she needed some convincing, but I knew. When did you? <laughs> when did, did you? When did you get the signal that maybe you had you you had uh, landed her? That you that you right. had impressed her enough? It was sunrise wife, and she was naked way. in my bed, and I'm thinking this is a. <laughs> no, the signal for me. I, I had a uh, I had a dinner party. And I had a crush on Deb really badly, and I was embarrassed about it. So I then, of course, did the thing you do, which is not speak to her. So I didn't speak to her for about a week, and then I invited. You blow your cool. Yeah, right. And she's, you know, she's the star of the show. Everyone had a crush on her, and then I invited her over for dinner with about twelve other people, and she got a phone call in the middle of dinner. And so you've got to understand you're in Melbourne, Beaconsfield Parade. You're in the suburbs of Melbourne. She gets a phone call, and we're all stop. And we're listening. And she goes, who's out the front? She goes, Mick Jagger. So it turned out Mick Jagger was in a limousine with a friend of hers out the front. Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones, my favourite band growing up, is outside my home <laughs> in Beaconsfield Parade and saying, come on, Deb, come and party with us. We're going out with Mick. And I'll never forget it. Deb goes, you can tell Mick that I'm with Hugh Jackman. Oh. Wow. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's pretty good. That's, that's, a, that's a signal. It's a, that's it's a, a signal. It's a good signal. It's a good signal when a woman turns this down. This is going to go well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Well, I, the, the the film is called The Front Runner, and I watched it this weekend because yeah. I'm special and I get to see things early. <laughs> and it's absolutely wonderful. Jason yeah. Reitman is the director. Yeah. You you for people who out there who don't know, you play Senator Gary Hart, who. Of course, I remember, because I, I grew up here. Were you aware that he was a prominent political figure back in 1987, 88? 87, I was touring around on a gap year with four other Australians backpacking. I, I don't remember the entire year, to be honest with you. <laughs> but I really didn't know much about it at all. And it turns out a lot of people, even people, they go, oh, yeah, I remember that. What was the boat? Monkey business? And they, but that's what, people, that's yeah. what people remember. They remember Donna Rice sitting on his lap in right. front of the boat that said monkey business. Exactly. The most damning photograph. Right, which actually in didn't appear until three months after he had already left the race. Right. Which people don't remember. But it's, what's great about it is this is a relatively small, in political history, it's a relatively small moment, but it actually was a huge turning point in the way uh, we view politicians, about the public versus private, or the, the press cover politics and politicians. And if, you, if you're like me at all and you're waking up, how do we get to where we are today? This is kind of a cool movie that will give you some, just a, a little bit of a, of a thread to how things got to where we are. Yeah, the big debate at the time was we haven't judged our presidents on their private lives or the candidates on their private lives to this degree to before. Right. Shall we destroy the front runner? Right. With this news, which it did. He was the front runner on the Democratic yeah. side and yeah. it ended his campaign. Yeah. Have you had a chance to meet him? Because yeah, I interviewed I him once and I and, and I thought, oh, I see why this guy was a front runner. Oh yeah. He's intelligent, he's personal, oh, yeah. he's politically uh, astute and, 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 and charismatic. Yeah. What, what did you guys talk about? I, I, I loved it. First of all, he makes a mean martini, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, and he's a, an amazing man. I call him a friend now, which I'm very blessed to do, and he's family. And, you know, th this is the kind of guy who, he's very humble, really, really smart. Like, I've got to be on, you've got to be on your game. Because you? you can talk to him about anything, and he's all over it. Still very, very sharp, still very involved. 
And he's the kind of guy, when in 1981, when he was a senator, he had lunch in the garage with Steve Jobs, right, and, and those guys, and then went back to the Senate and said, in 1981, we have to have computers in every classroom. We have to change our education system. Everything is changing. The world is going to change. He saw how uh, we were sort of addicted to oil the world over and how that's going to lead to problems in the Middle East. He saw the end of the Cold War eight years before it was happening. He had actually invited Gorbachev to his inauguration if he'd been elected. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so many things that he, he saw the future. And it, it really makes me sad knowing him, knowing his policies, knowing how brilliant he was that his voice was lost to politics. But I admire him a lot, and doing this movie taught me a lot, I have to tell you. Well, he, the most famous line from him in this entire thing, which right. include the movie, is to a reporter, look, you want to follow me around? Right. You'll be bored. Right. People didn't get bored. Well, yeah, you know, it was... And I think one of the things that came out of Matt Bai's book, the, this movie is based yeah. on, and Matt, uh, with Jay and Jason, uh, wrote the script, is that he puts to bed... That, that, that was a throwaway line that he said to a reporter that was a little bit taken out of context, and they were already following him around. I think that one thing that must have stuck in Gary's craw is for 30 years people go... I know you're the smartest man in politics, but why would you do something like that and invite people to follow you around? He was like, oh, I didn't. They were already following me, you know. So uh, there's a speech at the end. I don't want to give it away. There's a speech at the end where I, I, I think he's, he speaks so beautifully about politics, about the future of politics, and it's quite chilling in the end, as you see where we are today with politics, of the kind of things he saw. He was an amazing politician. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm biased, obviously. Well, the performance is Thank you, fantastic. Man. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Nice Thank to you, see man. you again. The Front Runner is in select theaters now and everywhere November 21st. Hugh Jackman.